You know what fascinates me is, is all of creation. I mean, if you look at the beauty of creation, if you look at a whale, if you look at the seas, if you look at the trees and the mountains, and if you, if you look just at all creation, it is so beautiful. And we are part of creation. God created us, and He created all of us included in this big picture. But then God does this very interesting thing for all of us. God says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, which is a beautiful word, the word we are wonderfully made, because that means you're full of wonder. It is wow. Wow. The moment God created you, it is wow. And it is wonderful to know that today, that we are created in His image. And that means that we are actually not just part of creation, we are different from creation. We are different. We are the crown of creation. And, and, and we love that. I mean, you've most probably heard it before that people would say that, you know, we, we're the crown of creation and you're beautifully and you're, you're made in the image of God, which is great. And it is true. But the one thing that we miss is because we are created in the image of God and we are different than the rest of creation, we have a higher call And we have a bigger responsibility. There's a responsibility on on me as a human and on you as a human that is not on any other creature or anything else that God has created. It is not just the beauty of that moment, but it is truly the responsibility of that moment. You see, we are the only creatures, the only creatures that God says in Hebrews 11, says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's only human beings that are taken up with that standard, the standard of saying it is impossible to please God. A whale doesn't need faith. To please God. A bird doesn't need faith to please God. Nothing in creation needs faith to please God. Just you and me. And it gives us a a very big responsibility. Yes, we've got a big call. We've got big shoes to fill. All of us in creation God has called us to be responsible in creation and to live a life of faith and I know that for all of us I know it's something to consider and think about that we are different you know if I think about creation if you look at the lion that that goes for its prey and, and it and it, and it tries to catch um, his prey. And when he catches his prey, you don't suddenly sit down and say, wow, that was bad. I can't believe the lion is eating that particular buck or whatever it is. You, you, you won't say, wow, that's bad. As a matter of fact, you won't even say, you know... You, if we want to compare a lion to us, we would most probably in that moment need to say, that lion's got issues. Something happened in his past. No, you don't say it. We don't say it because the lion is just being who he was created to be. But you see, the moment that we as humans do negative things. The moment that we as humans engage in wrong stuff, we know as humans that we are living not to our full potential. We are selling ourselves short of what God has called us to do. And it's incredible responsibility because that means 
that we are also the only thing in creation that can fall short from our call. Everything else can just be, but we have the choice. We can choose to be completely what God has called us to be or what God created us to be. We have that choice and we're the only thing in creation that has that choice. We're the only thing in creation that can say we can have faith. And it's only by our faith that we can please God. So now the question is, what is that faith? And I think we can go to Hebrews 11 and you're more than welcome to go in your Bible or go on your tablet or wherever if you want to. And uh, I've got a few scriptures here so you can also just check check out the screen, but it's always nice to take a few notes or make a few notes. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says this, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about we, what we do not see. See, when, when God says, that without faith we cannot please Him, this is the definition. The definition is that we as humans on this standard of living to our full potential, we need to, we need to have an assurance about the things that we do not see. And I know you've got the same problem than what I have. Okay? I have assurance in the things I see. I have assurance in the job that I have. I have assurance in the relationships that I have. I have assurance only in the things that I see. Even when it comes to singles, sometimes you will hold on to the relationship that is so negative for you that all your friends would tell you, just dump that guy or just dump that girl. But you, you're just saying, but he's the, he's the man. Well, she's the one. Because you're, you're so comfortable in having an assurance in the thing that you can see that you miss out on the thing that you cannot see. And actually God says we as humans has got a big responsibility. It is faith. We have to have faith. We have to have an assurance in the things that we cannot see see. And what I'm sharing today with you is, is really from my heart in Hebrews 11, what, what, what God has shared with me in the last week, because we all know what's happening in our town, and we all know that there is big tension, and a lot of hate, and a lot of things happening around us, and even in our country. But we are called to have an assurance in the things that we cannot see. Not have confidence in the things that we do see. But we sometimes get caught up in the things that we see. Well, the next verse actually explains it also oh, very well. It says, this is what the, um, the ancients were commended for. And verse 3 says it this way. By fault we understand, oh, by faith, not by fault, sorry about that. How did I get there? By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made of what was visible. And I love this verse because Hebrews starts off by explaining faith to us and say without faith you cannot please God and we as humans are, uh, need to take that responsibility. But then he explains faith further and he's got a lot of examples. But the first thing that he mentions is he says that God created everything from a command. From a command it was created. But then I also highlighted that last part because it is very interesting. The last part says, so that what is seen, what we see around us, nature and everything that we see around us, what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And that's quite interesting. 
Because that means when God created the universe, we would say God created out of nothing. But if you read this scripture, the Bible actually says no. God created out of what was not seen. There's a difference between nothing and not seen. You see, just outside these doors, there is some filtered coffee for you after the service. Okay? It's not nothing, but you cannot see it right now. And I promise you it is there. Okay? You cannot see it. It is not visible. And therefore, this verse actually says that from a command of God, He created something, not out of nothing, but from something that we were not able to see. It was invisible. You know why it was invisible? Because it, it was in the heart of God. It was a dream that He created. He could see it from the beginning. He could see it play out from the beginning. God created from something that he knew he's going to create. And it was his dream that he created. And we are created in that same image as God. And in the words of, a, of Owen McManus, a pastor in, um, in America... In the same way bees create hives and ants create colonies, humans create the future. See, it's from our dreams. And as we are created in the image of God, we also can dream the future. We also can dream of a place that is invisible for us to see today. You see, when we say we live by faith, we are actually dreaming of the invisible. We hope for the invisible, something that we cannot see. The reason why we get upset with what's happening in our world and what's happening in our country and the reason why you get upset with crime and all these things is because of the injustice and because there's a longing inside of every single human being in every one of us. For a better world. And we can see the future. We can see that it can be better. The change can happen. We can see it. And we have the responsibility in the universe. Out of everything that is created. We're the only beings that can see the future. We're the only beings that can dream a better future. The only Beings, nothing else will do that. And that is what it means to live by faith. Well, then the writer of Hebrews goes on and he gives a few examples. And I, the first example actually helps me to understand that we are living in a broken world. That the things that are happening around us, it's broken. It says, the following, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. And by faith, he was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. And I just want to remind you about this story. So it's the, the first story after God created. It was that Adam and Eve they had a terrible day and they sinned and God took them from the Garden of Eden and put them outside. And they were part of a broken world. But it's something interesting about Adam and Eve. Even though God put them out of the garden, something inside of them still said, God wants to connect with us. Have you ever thought about, I mean, Cain and Abel? They were the sons to Adam and Eve who taught them to bring an offering to God. It was most probably mom and dad. So it was most probably Adam and Eve that still knew that even though we're in a broken setup, God still wants to connect with us and He still wants us to worship Him. 
And then you get Cain and Abel. And Cain and Abel, the story goes that Abel had this, this passion, this in, immense passion to worship God. So much so that he gave his first, his best to God. And Cain, he just gave something. It's the only difference that we see in the story. Nobody directed them in a way to give or there was no instructions. It was just the way and the attitude of their hearts. And it connects a big way with worship and with giving even. That it was Abel's heart. That's why God said, Abel, I love your sacrifice. Cain, thanks for the sacrifice, but it doesn't please me. And we see in this story with Cain and Abel, we see the first time the brokenness of this world. And I think it's important for us that it's written in the chapter even of faith. Because there's something that we think as Christians, is we think that having faith, having a belief in a better world and having a belief in a, in a future without injustice, without crime, without pain and suffering, we think that there is not going to be pain and suffering in this broken world. But I want to remind you that there is pain and suffering, and we see it even here with Abel and Cain. You see, the pain is so deep that, just think about this. If we had to bring it down to us, Abel and Cain went to the very first church service. What did they do? They worshipped. And they were singing songs and it was nice. And Abel just enjoyed it. And he was worshipping and God said, I'm pleased with you. And then when he left the building, he got killed. He got killed by Cain. Not by any person he got killed by the other person that was at the worship service. It's a broken world that we live in. It's a broken world. And we cannot do it by ourselves. And Abel couldn't boast. And Cain couldn't boast either. But it is in this broken world that God also wants to meet us. But you're not guaranteed that there will not be pain if you have faith. You will not be guaranteed of it. Because of sin, because of the brokenness. And God even says it there. He says that it is sin. Cain, sin is crouching at your door. The brokenness and death, we were not created for that. But sin crouched at the door. It was sin that brings death in our world. It is us not living up to that responsibility and up to the call that God has for us in creation to fill that gap that we need to fill that brought the brokenness. And actually, I, I want to say we, we dream about a future that the ultimate will be one day in heaven. I think that a physical death we all deteriorate as we go on through the years. You know, you get older, you get grayer, you cannot do any, everything anymore. You can do less. And the end result is that we all die at some point. And I think physical death is most probably a blessing from God if we are in Christ Jesus. Because God says there will be an end to your deterioration. Because I don't want you to live like that. I want you to live without pain, without injustice, without poverty. I want you to live without the worries of this world. I want you to live without it and there will be a complete end to that. There will be a complete end to that. And that's the world that we're longing for. Is we know inside of us that the world can be better. But pain is not the pain that we even feel in this world. You're not guaranteed that there will not be pain for you in this world. We are not guaranteed that everything is going to work out for us. Here, 
But we know everything will work out for those that love God forever. That we know. But what is interesting about the next verse is you get a total opposite picture. The opposite picture is this. So by faith, the next character is Enoch. Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found. Because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. See, in this chapter of faith, the examples is firstly Abel. To say, yes, there's a brokenness in the world and you're not guaranteed that you're not going to go through pain. But that faith is still just pleasing God and still looking for a better life. And then the second example is actually of somebody that didn't experience it. That person never died, just went on to the next life. And you find the story of Enoch actually in Genesis 5. The Bible says, Enoch walked faithfully with God. And then he was no more because God took him away. It sounds like a perfect line in some form of a movie. And then he was no more, but he walked with God. And the Hebrews goes through so many other examples of Abram and Sarah and Gideon and so many other examples of people that walked by faith. Some of them experienced that great dream and some of them didn't. I want to read and I don't have it on the screen here but I want to read you just verse verse 8 here. The Bible says by faith Abraham when called to go to a place he would later receive as in an inheritance obeyed and went and went And even though he did not know where he was going by faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. And then verse 10 in Hebrews 11 says this, For he was looking forward to the city with the foundations, whose architect and its builder, is God. See, inside of all of us, that is our longing. To live in a city, to live in a place of which the architect and the builder is God. And we, we can dream that future. We can dream that future and we're going to see it fulfilled one day. But how does it play out in the world we are right now? That is the question. How does it play out in a broken world where we are right now? Well, I think Jesus, when he prayed, he said the following. Or when he taught his disciples to pray, he said, Father, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Therefore, we can experience something of heaven here on earth. We can experience something of heaven on earth. If Jesus said we could pray it, then we can experience it. But here's the important thing. Jesus said, Father, let your will be done. See, the the way that God reveals heaven on earth, the way that we experience God even transforming our city at this stage, the way that God just coming to our situations and changes everything around us even now is when we follow His voice. Maybe it's not that far-fetched for Enoch, for Enoch's story. To include the words that he walked faithfully with God. 
Because I think that's what we need in this time in our world. If we truly want to say that we are people of faith, that are longing and dreaming about a future, that we can see a world without injustice, without crime, without pain, the only way that we will be able to experience that is the moment we walk with God. Daily. Daily. It is in the walk with God daily. It is in hearing His voice daily. It is in spending time with Him daily. Even for our city, even for our country, it is every single day getting up and doing what He tells you to do. We've got to listen to His voice. We've got to listen to His voice. And we've got to do that daily. And I think you might ask me today, Gary, so, so how does it work? Even if you're in a business, even if you have a business, even if in your family life, it doesn't matter where you go. I've just seen it in, in all areas of life that people that make good decisions, that have peace in their life, even amidst of the troubles and amidst of their pain, I have just seen that those people are people that in some way spend time in the Word of God. I cannot give you ten steps or five ways, but I just know if you take some time just to walk with God, just to become quiet, and read his word. One of the things that I do is I would start off with reading the word of God, even before I pray. Because you know what happens? The, the moment I pray, I'm, I'm giving God my thoughts. But the moment I start reading the word, there's something of the thoughts of God that comes my way. And in some way, we make better decisions. It is walking with God daily. Walking with Him daily. Even in the midst of what's happening in your castle. We have to walk with God daily. See, Abram, the next hero of faith that has been spoken about in Hebrews 11. We know that one of the things that he had to do is God spoke to him and said to him, Abram, I want you to sacrifice your son. Abram went for three days. He got to the spot where he had to sacrifice Isaac. And when he lifted his hand to kill Isaac, God said to him, stop. Don't kill Isaac. And here is the thing. It is so important for us to hear daily. Because Abram, if he ignored the voice of God the second time, he would have killed Isaac. And sometimes we just want to say, oh, I had my revelation, you know, so many weeks ago. So it's fine. Daily. Daily. Every moment. Because God is leading you. And it is the only way, it's the only way I can see, if I read through all the other guys, I can just see that God led everybody in a different way. The only thing that they had in common was they spent time with God. They walked with Him and they listened to His voice. We have Joshua where God said, uh, this is what I want from you. I just want you to walk around the walls of Jericho. We have Moses that spoke to God in a burning bush. We have Noah that God said, I want you to build an ark. None of them had the same instruction. But they lived out the call of God and it's only one way. And it is if we walk with God. Because when we start walking with God, we will get to know His Son. 
we'll get to know the heart of Jesus. And if we every day just do what He calls us to do. How does it work in my life? And I know it can work in some way. It can work in your life in the same way. Even with business deals or whatever you have to do. I ask God every morning, God, what do you want me to do? And if there's a name that pops up, I try and call that person that day. If there's something that I feel that or somewhere that I feel I should go, somewhere during the day, even, even if it's five minutes, so it doesn't have to be the whole time, but I try and just listen to this inner voice and just obey. And if I get to that spot and there's nothing, then, then I do the next thing. It's okay. But it's the way that we start to hear and listen to the voice of God. And just being open, just to walk with Him. So it's the same with you. God, when you get up in the morning to say, God, who do you want me to find today? Who should I pray for? And the moment the name pops up, start speaking to God about them. Contact them. Let them know what you feel. If there's somebody that you feel for a business deal, In that moment, phone them. Just do it. Just try. The end of the day, it's the only way. It's the only way is if we walk with God. So I just want to do that last scripture justice. And I want to make sure that you read the complete verse. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. There it is again. All of us fearfully and wonderfully made. All of us or the crown of God's creation. But there's a big call on your life. And there's a big responsibility. And you can choose today to either live up to the call and the reason why God created you, or you have the ability, you're the only one in creation, It has the ability to live beneath your call. But the ball is in your court.